Welcome to Share Thoughts. I am Cheryl and these are my thoughts. I was in two minds over what to talk about this week. So I took it to Insta and ran a poll. It was a toss up, pause. It was a toss up between masturbation and intimacy and intimacy won. So here we are. I think I'll cover masturbation next week. Okay, so there are a number of different types of intimacy, but when we reference intimacy in the context of relationships, most would automatically think sexual or emotional. So I'm gonna go with the expected and talk about sex and intimacy. First off, I think it's important to establish that even though the term sex and intimacy are often used interchangeably in romantic relationships, we need to understand that there is actually a difference between the two. Sex and intimacy are not one in the same. You can absolutely have one without the other. So for example, you can have intimacy without sex and you can have sex without intimacy. You can also have intimate sex as well as unintimate sex. A lot of people get confused over this idea that sex and intimacy are not the same thing. And whilst, yes, sex can be an expression of intimacy and being intimate with someone might make you want to have sex with them to feel even closer to them. It is important that we do not conflate the two and assume that sex equals intimacy or intimacy is what drives sexual attraction. Let's break it down a bit further. In short, intimacy can be broken down into more specific categories such as intellectual or spiritual intimacy. But in this context, we're definitely leaning more towards emotional intimacy. Emotional intimacy can be defined as a very close personal relationship that requires understanding. It is closeness with another that kind of develops over time and the bonds deepens with time, which ultimately allows you to kind of bond on different levels. I mean, yeah, it's an absolutely necessary part of a healthy relationship. The word intimacy itself actually comes from Latin, which is quite obvious. Most words in the English language have their origins in Latin or, well, a lot of words do anyway. It comes from the Latin word intimus, which means innermost. An important aspect of intimacy is vulnerability. For intimacy to actually exist, each person within that intimate relationship will display a level of vulnerability and trust. Intimacy tends to develop over time rather than just happen. You know, it's conversations about things, personal and otherwise, as well as sharing happy moments, fears, sad times, and even displaying anger and frustration. Like when you have a moment of anger and frustration with another person, that is building intimacy in a kind of mad way. Well, it's not even a mad way, but you might think, how's that building intimacy? But it is because you're developing a bond, you're establishing a bond, you're establishing closeness, because when you kind of come back from the frustration or the anger. I think it's fair to say you're that little bit closer. All these things create intimacy between people so you can see while sex is a way of feeling closer to someone, it's not necessarily what creates intimacy. In fact, strictly speaking, sex is just physical. Sex is a physical act. Everything to do with sex is to do with the physical. I mean, it is arguable that sex can be done without any emotional connection. Now for me, whether you can have sex without any kind of connection is a whole other video for me because I personally feel that whilst a lot of people claim they can do sex without feeling any kind of involvement, attachment, feeling or whatever, I'm inclined to disagree to a point. Now don't get me wrong, if it's a one hit, yeah no feelings. Two hits, no feelings really. Three hits, all right, okay, you're kind of on dodgy ground now because why do you keep going back? Okay, it could be the convenience, but naturally as human beings, we start to develop these bonds because let's be real, if you're having sex with someone, unless you're literally just going and not saying a word to each other, not having any kind of conversation about anything, there's likely to be intimacy building. You know, the conversations, the discussions, the sharing of information, you know, expressing oneself to each other. Again, that all feeds into intimacy. Intimacy, well, it's connected to emotions, isn't it? So I don't know about that whole, well, you know, but like I said, that's a whole different video. But So we're not going to go there. Let's just say it is arguable that sex can be done without any emotion or without any emotional connection. So I guess the point is sex itself, sex as a thing, does not require any intimacy. I think we can all accept that. So sex itself does not require 
intimacy. The truth is sex and intimacy are very, very different. To illustrate how different, you only have to consider when couples have issues within their relationships. You know, you hear it all the time, like people are still together, but they may have lost the desire to actually have sex, but they're still emotionally intimate, meaning they still have intimacy. They still share stuff. They still talk about stuff. They still very much rely on each other for yeah, conversations, reassurance, just, you know, everything. They have an intimate connection, but there's no sex. I mean, th that's quite common. And on the other side to that, you may have a couple that just smash constantly. Like it's just sex all day, all night, constantly, but they don't talk. They don't have any kind of connection. They don't talk about anything. They just fuck. So yeah, sex and intimacy can exist without the other, but for a really strong bond, in a romantic relationship, you do need a combination of the two. Did any of that make any sense? Because I, I feel like I garbled my way through all of that. But yeah. Okay, but one other point that I want to make really, really quickly, and I think it's a point worth making, actually. Having emotional closeness with another person does wonders for an individual's mental health. As humans, we prefer interactions with people we can trust. So we don't always have to be on our guard, basically. We can let our hair down. We can relax. We can, you know, exhale. It's not always uptight and... Tense. We like that. We love that as humans. I think the bottom line is, especially as far as mental health is concerned, knowing that we have emotional connections with others means that we have support. We know that we have support. And that in itself offers balance. It offers stability and gives perspective throughout our whole lives. So yeah, that's sex and intimacy in a nutshell. There are a few things that I mentioned in this video that I'm definitely going to come back to and address, especially the whole thing about having sex without any emotion over a duration. Well, I'm really holding on to this fact, aren't I? <laughs> it's a conversation I've had with a lot of people, that's why. So I'm kind of, you know, I want to share my views on it. But yeah, we're going to come back to that. But for now, that's it. Sex and intimacy, there you go, <laughs> in the bag. I'm going to let it go now. Until next time, take care.